today, Sven the Slayer here once again with another Star Made Logic tutorial. In this video I'm going to be going over memory cells. So what we have here are two separate memory cells and they are basically polar opposites of each other. Um, the RS NAND and the RS NOR. So the difference is the RS NAND requires a low signal to the high AND to set and reset the memory cell. The RS SNOR requires a high signal to the low OR in order to set and reset. And that's the, just the difference there. That's it. So depending on how your circuit's built, you'll use one or the other. If you have a low pulse, you can use an RS. NAND. If you have a high pulse, you can use an RS NOR. Or you can just choose to use one all the time and just invert the signal if it's opposite of what you want. And they're both built exactly the same, and this is my preferred method of building them, is to put the inputs next to each other. And then it's just two ANDs and two knots for the RS NAND and the ANDs get wired into the knots, and then the knots back across, so you have a loop. So this one, that one, and so on and so forth, it forms a loop. And that's it, that's how you, you build the RS NAND. Now the RS NOR is exactly the same, except with two ORs instead of two ANDs and it functions exactly the same, just with a high pulse instead of a low pulse. So this one, see if I click the orange one, it'll toggle, but this one over here, if I click the orange one, nothing happens. I need to invert the high signal to a low signal. And these have to be done through pulses, because if you control them just with activators, um, assuming you don't clear it ahead of time, you can end up with just a broken memory cell. This memory cell is broken and not remembering anything properly. So that's how you build them. It's a very simple mechanism uh, circuit, and they're very useful. Now over here I'll show you how to take advantage of a memory cell. So what we're going to build is we're going to build a player detector, two of them. So I already have the area defined just to save time. And now we want to build two low pulse switches. So that's done. Showed you how to do this in the last video. It's just an activator, a knot, a delay, and an OR. Now this one will also be self-terminating. So to make it self-terminating, you wire the OR back into the start. And when you flip it, it'll pulse. So normally, if this wasn't self-terminating, you'd flip it, and you would need the circuit to reset it at some point, but we just want it to reset itself. And build another one over here. So. Activator, not, delay, or activator into the not and the or, and then around the world. So now we have two pulses wired up to the player detector. So when the player moves through either of the two zones, it'll send out a pulse. Next up, we want our RS NAND latch, so two ANDs, two knots, wired ANDs into knots, and then knots crisscrossing into the ANDs, so we now have the memory cell. Wire the, you, know, you can take the input from either circuit. Simply 
toggle the RS snore latch depending on what side you uh, enter on. And finally, wire each side of the RS NAND gate into each side of the door. So it now acts like a functioning airlock. So what that looks like as flare, you approach the airlock and it opens for you and then you can enter and leave as you see fit. And each time you enter it'll toggle the state and hold it open. So you have a very simple, easy to make airlock. Thanks for watching.